This is my 1,000th video on my YouTube channel. And I thought I'd do something I have never done before. Something absolutely crazy that no one would ever expect. Something so insane, it's unthinkable. I am decorating my hardcore city build to bring on the good vibes. Now I can decorate all day, but they'll still feel empty. So if one catches your eye, leave a comment below with a name for the shop, who owns it, and maybe a little story about them. I'll pick out a few, write them in game, hide them in a barrel inside the shop itself for your story to live on in this world now leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe let's get rocking first up here on the mansion i need a floor for a base color i'm thinking we go with some spruce wood Woo! maybe i also need torches i'm just gonna close the door with that i just need to fill in everything else along this place with all of our spruce planks with that in place instead of a giant room i need to grab some dirt now planning out the rooms and breaking up the space into something a little more manageable but for some reason my brain told me to put the door to the garden up here we'll figure this out in a sec as first i need to get a staircase leading up to the second floor and for this one i'm just gonna use some spruce planks as well to get things set in place now i know the total amount amount of space that I have to work with and we can start on the grand hall by fixing up the door then oak planks going around it a little like that for now I think it's gonna work next up replacing the dirt outline back here with polished granite going all the way around afterwards piling up sand with smooth sandstone going all the way to the top for the top I've got a new idea I want to try with the base walls in place I added it and trim around the top so it's something more than bare walls up to the ceiling speaking of the ceiling I want to tear it out to build a grand chandelier or two of them where i can now tear up the floor torches and the floorboards themselves with money mangrove roots and brown carpet to go around working in the last few detail bits around the grand hall including a mosaic at the end for a pop of color and a ton of flower pots around this first room is now ready to go now to access the gardens i'd like to build a slab staircase going all the way up to this next layer around the edge of this we can just add in a few bits of spruce i built some simple decorations in this hallway with lots of plant life to easily tell you're entering the garden two sections are now finished up next i want to transform this room into a dining room to contrast the warm colors over here i want some bluey turquoisey colors for the walls with some warped wood and prismarine brick The walls and ceiling are in place and then from here we can use a little bit of acacia maybe smooth red sandstone and acacia trap doors for the table or maybe i just do this because underneath i think would be really cool to fill it in with skulk a few chairs on either side but not on fire as i want the fireplace to actually be right over here just as a way to keep things warm with this final addition as a centerpiece the dining room is now finished alongside the great hall entrance to the gardens and an extra little back hallway remember this is where we started today without even a floor at the far end of the hallway i'm thinking we transform this into a kitchen starting by tearing out the floor and using an alternating pattern of smooth stone and stone combining it with the fireplace from the dining room we can build out our own new cooking area right in here campfire hidden underneath smoker right here and we've got ourselves a cooking station for a kitchen we need a lot of counter space storage for food and equipment and even a little herb garden to help produce some spices for cooking to bring the whole atmosphere together when walking in this this instantly feels like a kitchen and I'm super happy with it. Now three rooms left to go on the far side. Step one, walls to divide the rooms up, sandstone to keep it on theme, but I also want to have a fun one in the back with some stripped crimson logs, where we'll have a few meeting rooms back in here and over here, and an office to show the mansion was really transformed into a town hall. Taking a few spruce signs, we can finish the hallway with a simple bench, where I sleep the night, where we wake up with a new conference room. If I could, yes, just get the painting in place. Look at it, it's beautiful, except I would like to change the floor out to some deep slate. Completely with a door perfect getting a nice breath outside inside the villager trading hall cave i need to get a little bit of redstone here because i've got an idea i want to try look at all the work we've done yeah you can see everything there's a plant in the window look at it tearing out this wall i just built up i want to move it over a block and get rid of this one as i've really enjoyed working with the wallpapers just to make the rooms feel a little different from each other a little something like this and with that we've now filled a little space with another office i am going to admit something that i don't 
don't want to admit, I have a problem. And it's right here behind me. All of these shulkers are so unorganized. I don't know how to find anything. Help. But I got a cool new office. Yeah, look at it. Shulkers can't get me in here. If I just keep building, eventually all of the blocks will be placed down and it'll be fixed, right? I think. Or maybe I'm just really hoping. That's a nice little table. First installing a door. And as a final step in here, we need to fix up the ceiling. Where I want to bring some oak slabs going all the way around like this. And then we just raise up the center. That should do it. Except maybe a table here could be nice. For the most important part of today's episode, I need to build a new field in this hardcore world. However, I have so many fields and no mills to process the wheat. So I don't go insane only building in tiers today. I want to construct a windmill at each one of these pillars. Next, I need a lot of materials. So I first ran over to the birch forest to chop down a bunch of trees for trap doors, then to the mangrove swamp for mud, stopping at the wheat farm, then crafting the mud into packed mud. And it's not a whip build without spruce in it. So throwing a lot of stuffs together. And this here should be just about everything we need. Starting with a base of some mud and polished deep slate on top. Next, I'm gonna grab all of this packed mud, some spruce trap doors, fences, terracotta mushroom blocks, campfires, and those. On the inside, I wanna create these little archways just like this. Then in the front, I need a larger entrance to get inside. Perfect. With that, I finished the base of the windmill, adding a lot of mud going all the way up and adding in a few more windows. A big old pillar of spruce up the center, composters around the edge and adding in an oak plank floor for the second level. Along with walls out of oak for three of the sides, Sides. The windmill blade's gonna stick out here eventually, but we'll sort it out in a bit. The final side I wanna leave as an opening for a lift with a little something like that. Raising the roof with some deep slate and spruce to make it fit in with the existing builds in the area. Now for the important part, the windmill itself on the front of the building looking fantastic. Last step for now is adding in a little bit of coarse dirt inside for the floor. For now, the first windmill is finished up in the farmland. Just two more windmills to go right down the road over here. Ah! Well, where'd you come from? Sticking with mostly the same build for the next, but trying to make it feel unique, so I added a ladder up to the top from the outside instead of the lift, which now has a super fancy little interior space down below. Up the ladder, we can go to the top with a little bit of a workstation up here for the mill itself. Number one also now has interior space in here too, with an inside ladder leading all the way up. And oh my gosh, look at that, suddenly a third windmill. Oh gosh, how did that get there, huh? We can just assemble the little mill here in the bottom, or piston composter and stairs going around got a little terraforming do here so we can actually now use this lift i am kind of doing an episode on interiors here so i should probably finish decorating this thing One more step after adding in the details to the buildings. This is episode 1000, so I'm being extra. And I want to bring a stream coming down the mountain through here into our lake. Just a little guy. Carving out a small channel for the water to cascade down the side of the mountain, I added in coarse and rooted dirt along the edge of the stream bed before bringing the water and cascading, of course, down the mountainside. I'm bringing in some flowers, sugarcane, dark oak saplings, and mangrove leaves for greenery along the edge of the stream too, just to make it a little more lush. Next, crafting some spruce fences and getting spruce leaves out of the leaf box. I want to decorate the land with a few smaller trees to help the windmills feel taller sitting on the mountainside. I'm definitely not putting off building interiors, so hey, look, bone meal. We can get even more grass and keep decorating the outside. Yeah, just a little bit more time spent over here. Maybe a touch right back in here. You know, not having tall grass right here behind the windmill, I somebody's gonna notice it. So I, I gotta do it. Somebody's gonna notice it. And dive. Uh, run out of bone meal. Dang it. Okay, no more distractions. I started today with nearly nothing in front of the city gates. Now we're finally getting somewhere with these brand new windmills. With my wind farm built, we're eco-friendly now, but I also need to be eating friendly and plant a field. Get it? Because it's food. If that joke didn't make you want to subscribe, maybe the fact that I've posted 1,000 videos on YouTube will. Double check that you're subscribed to my channel as YouTube might have unsubscribed you randomly, which would be sad. Over 60% of the people watching right now are not even subscribed. With that out of the way, we now have 27 fields inside this world. With the first floor of the mansion done, I need a break to tackle some of the smaller interiors, like the grocery store 
next with a basalt floor. I'm trying to channel my inner trader flip here. The most important thing to sell is candles and succulents. Of course, with some more shelving around the entire space, quite literally farm to table, I need a seed, a few potatoes, and some carrots. For a small produce stand back here, we can just do some carrots, potatoes, and then hidden up in the corner, a wheat with a big old tub of blueberries to sell. Back here, I want a big table so we can display some goods like sea pickles, some more produce on display up here, big leafy green plant. I don't know why the grocery store is overgrown, but that's the way it's going. And a register. Lastly, growing all of the produce so it looks nice. The grocery store is now completed, but it's just a front as i want to go underneath and build a pumpkin and melon farm starting by digging out a large enough space to contain two of the farms i've run out of redstone so i went into the villager trading hall to visit the clerics and trade for some more then grabbing cobblestone from the quarry and running into the nether for quartz from the piglin bartering farm all the craft over a stack of observers with an equal number of pistons to match next i need a minecart track running underneath for a hopper minecart with powered rails in the middle to keep it moving and a way to bounce it back at at the end grabbing some of the dirt we cleared out a slab in the middle and we make room for farmland now for the important part pumpkin seeds and melon seeds i have a pumpkin farm down here but i have yet to plant a melon field in this entire world because who would plant a giant field of melons they seem kind of useless right off to the jungle i go to find some melons 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 where are you melons melons oh, melons much better planting all the seeds in alternating rows and adding in some lights so they grow more efficiently as i'm definitely going to be down here all the time i want to add in some lime glass along the front as a way to see inside first farm is now done and here goes number two with two of these farms i'm gonna need a good amount of storage down here which means a lot of chests and a bunch of hoppers five chests across going up three tall i need to run hoppers along the back to be able to unload everything into it and somehow get two minecart unloading systems in here i think i can squeeze the first one in right here i think okay it looks like it works no it does not work that should work it's coming back and now we're talking And off goes the second. With the farm done, I set off to detail the area a touch and installed an access point from the grocery store to get into the storage room. Where the grocery store is about 10 times noisier now. But finally, 2,943 days into this world, I have easy access to pumpkins and melons. Just gotta wait for the little guys to grow and this farm's gonna be producing like crazy. Moving next door in the city, working from the stone cobblestone through the deep slate, we can just fill in the rest of the floor with this. From here, I wanna bring the walls all the way down and fill them in just to give ourselves a good amount of space with the floors in i also need a ceiling and dark oak slabs with stripped dark oak logs should do it i should put a torch up here otherwise it's going to be very dangerous this workshop is going to be for building wagons so i want to start with a bunch of storage space back here on some racks a bit like this that we can use for a load of storage using oak trap doors to make it look like we have some extra wheels lying around and when in doubt more barrels and other stuff next building a wagon that looks like it's being repaired or just being constructed right now and i think it'll line up yes we can make it look like it's being held up by the chains a few more tweaks and this here works for the shop get it Okay, moving on to targeting the main street buildings next. I've decided to focus on the first floors as it's really the only thing I can see when I'm walking around down here. Looking in the windows like a creep, I can at least kind of see the grocery store. The second floor, not at all. Here we have the tailor shop that still needs a name. I want to make it warm and inviting on the inside. So here we have mangrovey logs. I want to divide this up in a few smaller rooms with some strip mangrove logs going up the sides. Just kidding as I think red terracotta instead of strip logs might look a little cleaner to keep it open air though we could extend some fences across and trap doors on top yeah that looks a lot better to walk up to the second floor that I'm never gonna go to we can install a little staircase to contrast the warm tones I want to add in a big carpet here in the front with cyan light blue and cyan kind of bordering it as you come in and a cool copper desk right back here I want to have a big old like fitting room back in this point where this is meant to be a mirror and i need to grab the most useless block in minecraft to fill it in blocks of diamond 
Outside of building a beacon, these things are pretty worthless, so we might as well decorate with them. Inside, I want to have a bunch of plants so we can start with some azaleas right over here. Maybe that can set up here too. And I am going to need some light in here, so soul lanterns. They don't give off a huge light level, so we're going to need quite a few of them. Adding in some pearlescent frog lights on the side and moss blocks with azaleas on top, we can create a cool display box where I need some armor stands later, but the front should be more or less ready to go. A little storage under the staircase and back here can be a bit of a workstation. Chairs for people to sit in, barrels for storage, and a grindstone. Don't know why a tailor would need it, but maybe they do. I should have some smooth stone right here and sticks to craft armor stands. Now I can't make any cloth-based clothing, but if I visit the Hogland farm here in the nether, I might have leather? No, no, not at all. Absolutely none. Come on, piggies, into the pit with you. Hopefully we have some leather ready. Almost enough. We'll make it work. Crafting up a few pieces. We'll see how many I can get out of all of this leather. Oh, perfect. Two whole sets. One out of purple and light blue. Whip has wares if you have coin. But you might want to spend that more at the tavern once we decorate the inside. Starting by boxing in the space by creating a wall for the kitchen and using dark oak for the ceiling. This deep slate leads to a chimney, which means the tavern can have a nice fireplace. Much better. Next up, a place for people to sit and eat at tables where we can introduce a little bit of warped wood and create some cool little booths. Perfect. And I think on the way to the kitchen, I could squeeze in a few more back here. We got to fill this space as much as we can. So big table in here. This can just be made out of some slabs. We could put like a plate here and a flower pot cup thing there. Next, I have to run over to the farmers, grabbing a few emeralds along the way as all perfect Minecraft tables need a cake. Right there. I added a staircase to the second floor if we want to do anything with it in the future. And then right over here, I want to include a lectern and a sign to make a little welcome station. Well, stair and then signs. Some coat racks and storage barrel. I like barrels, okay? I like barrels. You know what? I'm going to put some more barrels back here and you can't stop me. Oh my gosh, she's switching up with beehives. Ah! Just kidding. Barrels. For the chef to work their magic, let's put a campfire down here and two smokers on top. Finally, a light in the corner and a few herbs on display. And then a cake being ready to go out. Now it's kind of bare as we walk inside. So I've got to find something to do in here, but it's really skinny hallway. So maybe some paintings, but also got to set the vibe. Maybe like a cool little carpet as you walk in. And we make one of those fun stations where a lot of people's just artwork is on display for sale. Yeah, that's kind of fun. With the first floor of the tavern completed, next up is something a bit different. I want to focus on detailing the stables over here for the rest of the good animals to have a home in the city. Starting by first removing all of these little end bits to where we can add some bigger dividers with our spruce and then making it so the animals can't just walk out the side. We can do a few slabs on top and then just fences back here with some trap doors above. Yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. And I would like a way to get up to that second floor if we do want to use it in the future. So I'm thinking right about here, we just take some stairs up. Then we can do something a little fun with right there underneath. And maybe this corner, because it's a little cramped, is just some storage. The actual stall for animals, I want to add in some jungle doors so that they can see through. So it doesn't feel like a quiet little box of happy thoughts. Happy thoughts, not a dark little box of sorrows. Whoever's staying in this one will forever be hungry as we can put some hay bales down here. Then on this side, I think it's almost like a tack room with some extra storage. That I think is going to work out pretty well. Ground torches, not acceptable. I love lamp too much. Then it looks like I never finished carrying that detail along the edge so we can bring in a little bit more of the these. And I think I might strip these down as it's a little too dark. You know what? I like that. That looks pretty good. We'll get animals out here soon. But first, this back area needs some love. I really need to get a well inside the city or some form of water. I keep having to walk all the way out here. But it does look pretty good coming back inside. Now in the back, I'd like to create a water trough so we can also show the animals some more love. Perfect. Then we can kind of divide this a little, little bit in case we have extra animals that need to stay outside. There's a little bit of a dividing wall here now. Now, as we all know, animals tend to be a little stinky. So over here, I'd like a place to store manure. To represent this, I got muddy mangrove roots and so soil, which we can clear out all of this. Oh, there's the farm I just built. This should work with maybe a little fungusy something growing on it. We'll just move on to over here where I want to have some warp roots and then maybe some of these guys just dotted around like some stuff is kind of growing back here. But overall, the stables is pretty ready to go. Next up, I'm going to need a 
few leads. As there's this wandering trader llama up on the hill that I really want to bring with me into the stables. He's been here for a long time. Oh, he has a friend. I feel like it actually makes a lot of sense to have wandering trader llamas inside the city stables that's designed for people that just stay over for a little while. Please don't die. Please don't die on the berries. Please don't die. You're professionals. Look at you. You must traveled a lot. Nope. You're dying on the berries. You're not supposed to do that. I need name ideas for these llamas down in the comments below. And I think it makes sense if they're a pair. Once again, back into the villager trading hall we go. I need golden carrots. One for a snack. Two for a visit to breed a new mule. Come with me, little guy. There we go. I really should make a lot easier pathway to get over to the city for my starter base. I have to walk all the way down the mountain and back up. On top of the mule, I've decided I want to obtain all of the rideable mobs inside of Minecraft. Checking the box on the mule here. Next up, we need a horse. We need a donkey and we need a skeleton horse, which requires a thunderstorm. Let's focus on the easy ones and see if a uh, thunderstorm wants to roll in. Oh, here's some horses. Perfect. Horse of the mountain. I need you to come with me. No, no, no. Don't, don't come with me. Don't come with me. Not this way. Not, it's not smart. <gasps> You're a professional. You live on the mountain. You know what you're doing. There we go. The horse is now acquired as well. I think to make this a lot easier, I'm going to need to find some saddles. And the end rating loot barrel supplies. Oh, it started raining. Is this... I don't think it's a thunderstorm. Okay, let's focus on finding a donkey to bring home. I've also just now realized I also need to bring a pig home because technically you can put a saddle on a pig, which I might have an extra pig hanging out back in here. Yes, there he is. Look at him. Come with me, my porky friend. Ham sandwich has been brought home, and I think the perfect place for him is going to be to hang out here, just kind of attached to this. Back to finding the donkey. Target acquired. Donkey, you have been located. I'm here to save you. Okay, we've got our donkey. Give him a saddle, and we ride on back to the city. Only one mob remains at this point that I want to bring back here. Let's throw this guy in a stall, and we can just lock him in. But I need the skeleton horse. Another one that I could bring back would be a strider, but I do feel kind of mean bringing him here with no lava and i'm not putting lava in the city quite yet there hasn't been a thunderstorm for quite a while in this world so i'm hopeful one's gonna happen somewhat soon and i think this is a really good spot to hopefully get some skeleton or spawns i will just wait until we have a thunderstorm Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that thunderstorm? It's here. Oh, it's finally here. I think I just need to start fighting things and then maybe we'll get something. I think I'm going to need my chest piece for this one. There hasn't been a thunder strike. In oh, speak of the devil. There it is. There it is. We have one. I have to get really close here. He's going to explode. No, 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 no. We can't kill the horses. Okay, we got one. We got one. We got one. Nope, we killed the horse. We specifically killed the horse. We have three horses. Yes, 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 yes. I need to go sleep instantly. This is the first time I've ever had skeleton horses in a Minecraft world. Oh, they're so cool. Hello, my new friends. Oh, they're already tamed. That's amazing. Look at him. Just don't look at the arrows in my face. The battle is over and welcome to your new home, my skeleton friend. I believe this. Nope, that's the baby mule. It's been a while since I've been here. I thought he would have grown. Piggy's over here. You can hang out here with him. I swear, it's great. You're gonna love it. The other two skeleton horse friends that survived the battle, I'm just gonna let them roam free. And if you have any ideas on what we can do with the other skeleton horses, let me know. All of the interiors on Main Street are now finished up, except the villager cart storage area, which will come later. As I'm ready to finish off the mansion interior. Starting by walking up the stairs to the second floor where we have nothing. To make it a little bit of a safer place to work so we don't fall down in the middle i should probably put a little railing a little stripping later and that should do it next i'm gonna need some terracotta and a little bit of cactus oh i already smelted some yay all to craft cyan terracotta from here i'm gonna need some warp wood from the lumber mill but i'm all out that's a problem, which can be solved by a quick trip into the nether to find ourselves a warped forest somewhere in this mess. Yoink. Perfect, here we go. This tree should be enough. Yep, that should be plenty. Now to find my way out of here. Ah, oh, the perimeter, perfect. With all the warp goodies squared away, I'm gonna tap into the wither rose supply here for some black dye for a quick trip to the guardian farm. And there was plenty here and no shards. All right, a quick AFK session at the guardian farm later. Taking the prismarine shards, we can craft dark prismarine. One final step for the walls. I need to take all of this concrete powder and turn it into concrete. 
All of these materials are going into the walls and ceilings inside of the mansion for the second floor central room, some storage closets, and most importantly, my bedroom. The main room in here is looking great. We've still got that half left to go, but over here inside of my bedroom, which is very massive, I thought we could instead use some mangrove planks for the roof. It might be busy. I was going to say it might be easier to build from up top, but I don't know. Let's just go the old fashioned way. Ah, much better. For these larger gaps, I'm thinking we just use mangrove logs and strip them down. To make it safer up here, let's throw in some torches too. And you know what? I might do that inside of here as well. This will give it a little bit more texture and help it feel, a, I think, a touch more completed. This is starting to feel a little bit more like a bedroom in here. Just a few places that still need to get patched in. A closet with a mud floor, a bedroom with a stripped mangrove floor, and a back office with an acacia floor. We can move to the other side where I've kind of started planning things out with the main car carpet here in the center then two rooms on either side and i'm thinking a display case here at the end on top of the copper we can bring in acacia planks and then stacking up logs going all the way up with the border of some more planks on top Of course, stripping the logs all the way down. There's not much space here in the hallway, so I'm thinking we just extend some dripstone blocks all the way back. Oak trap doors going back down, so it's just not quite as flat, with some soul lanterns to light it up. For the left room, I wanna take some jungle slabs in here and trap doors to connect across. Above the jungle though, I think some pink terracotta could be kind of a fun color to incorporate. Now for the end room over here, I wanna take some oak slabs and just work them up to the top. But you know what? What if we just flatten it across here? Then I don't have to add any more copper. Just like that, we now have an extra room, which might need a torch for now. In here, I want to create some display cases that will fill out shortly with massive armor stands but for a fun floor, I thought the warp nylium I gathered up when I was getting the logs earlier could be kind of fun. We'll get frog lights in here soon for the base of these cases, but for now, we can throw in dark oak trap doors. This room, I want to turn into a bit of a kid's room, just like this. Now, across the hallway, I want to dedicate this room to the number 1000, as this is my 1000th video on YouTube, mostly because I wasn't really sure what else to put in here, so this will have to do. A big 1000 thousand a few final touches in here with a little bit of greenery and some storage moss blocks in here with some azaleas on top maybe the one in the window is a big old bushy guy and trap doors to frame them in. and i can just sit in this chair and stare at the big old 1000 greenery is a big aspect of my builds and my life irl so i want to add a ton of plants throughout this second floor really quickly coming back to the 1000 room i want to try putting a giant painting up here like that <laughs> I love it. Oh, the pig face is perfect. Now, moving on to some weirder details, this room is kind of about flexing. So I wanted to put a few things on display, like a beacon and some wither skeleton skulls. I only have one extra beacon right now, so eventually I'll get a second in here. And these are all gonna be armor sets on armor stands with a netherite one in the middle. But before we get to that grind, let's finish out this central area. Like some lily of the valleys and randomly a skull shrieker. This is about showing my conquests. So we can put a second here with a little table thingy and a crystal. Ooh, this room is starting to come together. An additional thing is maybe we do some benches with the light blue bed and a second right here. Now for the little supply closet in here, we could put beehives, barrels, barrels, maybe a chest, extra flower pot, and that should do it. We're not really going to go in there that often. Now a very important detail, however, sea pickle and another wither skelly skull. Inside of my bedroom, I've been kind of working on a four poster bed as I've went along and I think I finally got got an idea. We can use some more of our dark oak slabs and bring them all the way across like this, kind of giving it its own roof. Then connect the lower part with some trap doors. And because I have them light blue beds in the middle, this little corner over here is kind of going to represent enchanting. So I want an enchanting table in there. But first we can finish off this with some barrels, maybe some more right there. And up top, I'm thinking we just do four solo chests. This is trying to be my closet. And since there's no roof in it, I've got dark oak slabs at the ready. This deep slate leads up to the main chimney for this side of the house. So let's just connect ourselves in here and have it look like it's going through the floor. Maybe more like that. Because the kitchen is right below us. So it does need a way for that smoke to get up. This little room back here, we can throw a jungle door in and I like that. And then some barrels along there. And I think just some chests up top 
and there's again no roof i do have oak slabs and i do have roof now for some of the finer details where i'm gonna need a lot of sticks for five armor stands when destroying the village underneath us i did loot a book that's just been sitting in the shulker so i've got a great use for it at this time to dive into a lot of these diamonds and a little netherite as i'm gonna need two new diamond swords and five sets of diamond armor and a new enchanting table where this is gonna get real expensive especially as for the full flex i want to take one of them and turn it into a set of netherite armor with two swords for some reason this is my super fancy mansion after all so it's got to live up to the part quick stop in the bedroom to drop off the enchanting table and a spare ender chest in my office armor stands at the ready netherite here in the center with them thinking we take the two swords and point them right back in the middle. Nope, not my totem. I would like that, please. There we go. Now the diamond armor can go right here, but I'll be honest, just another set of diamond there in the corner sounds kind of weird to me. So unfortunately, these two chess pieces are gonna go to waste. Tying the mansion back into the rest of the things I've accomplished in this world, I think a set of gold armor on both sides helps tie that in, kind of showing the crazy gold farm that we have here too, but everything leads up into the netherite in the middle. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, anytime I walk down the hallway or just around, I can just see the netherite armor at the end. Ooh, that's looking good. One final treat for those of you that have stuck through this interior building extravaganza. I reward you with another interior. The blacksmith is no longer a mess of dirt behind mangrove trapdoors. And instead, we have a double smith inside that is in need of a great story from the comments. Interiors are a huge building struggle for me, so this video has been a challenge and has taken well over two weeks to record so please be sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy and let me know if it was worth it down in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and with that i'll catch you all on the flip side